ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm John Weeks and this is The Leader. Today marks six months since Putin's invasion of Ukraine and the grim milestone comes alongside a very pertinent anniversary, the Independence Day of Ukraine. On a surprise visit, Prime Minister Boris Johnson is in the country today to see Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky. Yesterday, Mr Johnson pledged continued support for Ukraine and said, we will never recognise Russia's annexation of Crimea or any other Ukrainian territory. In the face of Putin's assault, we must continue to give our Ukrainian friends all the military, humanitarian, economic and diplomatic support that they need until Russia ends this hideous war and withdraws its forces from the entirety of Ukraine. Ukrainian defence chiefs say around 9,000 of their troops have been killed since the invasion began on the 24th of February. Today, the UK's Armed Forces Minister James Heapy revealed that Vladimir Putin's army has lost 80,000 soldiers, killed, wounded, captured, gone missing or deserted in that same six-month timeline. British defence chiefs have stressed that the war in Ukraine is proving costly and strategically harmful to Russia and said that Mr Putin's army was now struggling to achieve any decisive breakthroughs. As the war continues, there is an optimism among Ukrainians, though, that they will be victorious and end the conflict. So, six months in, how is the country coping and what has driven that optimism? Joining me now is Denis Ganja, a Ukrainian youth delegate to the UN in Kyiv. So first of all, Denis, can you just describe what it's like in Kyiv at the moment? You know, of course, it's strange a bit because uh, was it a normal Independence Day? Of course, we will be celebrating the whole country, we'll have a holiday, people will be probably going and barbecue, drinking beers in pubs, you know, just hanging out and, you know, praising all the heroes who have died in their previous fights for our independence. But this year is, of course, different because today, it's just as I'm talking to you, one of the longest airstrike alarms has ended. Of course, there are people in the streets, but really a lot of people have left the city for these days because there is the high risk that Russians will go with the uh, shellings that they can destroy the civilian buildings, the administrative buildings. And, you know, the life in Kyiv as a whole, it's like you're living just this day. You normally don't think about tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. You don't have the plans for a week. You do not plan your vacation. You just know that any moment something can start and that's why you're living the life as it can be. And as you said, today marks six months since the war started and Ukraine's Independence Day. I imagine it's a day of mixed emotions in the country. Of course, you know, because finally, you know, we gained our independence 31 years ago pretty easy, I would say, because it was just the falling of the USSR. We didn't have any fightings in the streets, any big revolutions, you know, like the Poland gets its independence or Czech Republic, like, or even like the Baltic countries. And right now, and as for eight years already, we are having war with Russia. We don't understand what independence really means and which price you should pay for the right to be independent. And as it is the sixth month of the full-scale invasion, which started on the 24th of February and killed tens of thousands of people and destroyed a lot of cities like Mariupol, Kharkiv, Mykolaiv and others, Of course, it's hard for us today because today at the same time while we are celebrating and we are happy because, you know, in the beginning, no one believed that Ukraine will stand up for more than three days. Even some Ukrainians have not believed in this, but it's already the sixth month. We do already know that we will not lose this war. It's only the question of time when we win this war. And of course, we all hope that the next Independence Day in 2023, it will be the Independence Day, which will be celebrated all around Ukraine. And by saying this, I mean also the free cities of Mariupol, Donetsk, Sevastopol, Simferopol and others. 
And of course, it's been a horrific six months for Ukraine, but there is a lot of talk in the country of actually achieving victory in this war. What's given the people of Ukraine such optimism? So, of course, it's our army who gave us this optimism. And, you know, as I have told you already, half a year ago, no one outside believed that there is someone to fight against the second largest army in the whole world. No one really trusted and gave us enough weapons to fight from the very first moment. It was like not a lot of them, really, because only right now we are receiving all those high Mars artillery, even probably we'll receive planes. And speaking about the optimism, you know, in one interview, the head of one of the biggest volunteer foundations, he said that when in December they had talks about what if Russia invades Ukraine for real, do we have a chance? And our commander of the army, Valery Zaluzhny, he told that, you know, we have only one chance to win this war. It's when the whole country will stand up against the enemy. And this happened. This happened half a year ago in the whole March and April. You know, the whole country was at the same time trying to, of course, get into the safer place. But at the same time, everyone was working. Everyone was donating money to the army, you know, collecting humanitarian support, going out in the European cities to protest, to get your attention to Ukraine, joining the army. There are really a lot of people who have joined the army or joined, I know, the medical forces or joined the police. And this is really what is giving us the optimism because we do trust each other. Right now, we are the nation and like there is like everyone do understand who is Ukrainian, that we are one nation and there are only us who can really beat the Russians. Because even like we receive a lot of support from you guys and especially from the Great Britain and we are more than thankful for this. But of course, you will not come here to fight instead of us. And it's only us who can do this. So this is what gives us the optimism. Let's take a break now. In part two, Dennis explains what more support is needed and what we can do to help the country. Even like having still a Ukrainian flag on your avatar in Facebook or going out, you know, to the concerts, to, I don't know, some protest, they still help. So, Dennis, obviously there's been support coming in from a lot of countries over the year, but what more is needed? I will say not a very popular thing in the West that we need more weapons. Because, you know, people tend to say that, oh, no, we will not give money for, like, uh, military purposes. We will only give this money to, like, refugees or humanitarian support. But it's about fighting with the cause. And if you want that there are, like, no refugees, that there is no need for a big humanitarian support, unfortunately, the Russia has created such conditions that the only way we can stop them is by beating them up in the field. And it's only weapons that we need and that we are asking every day and we are saying this to the whole world that, guys, we have already proved ourselves to be effective with using the weaponry you are giving us. It has already helped us to achieve some victories in the battlefield. But in order to stop this war and to make sure that Russia does not have the resources to go any further, and I'm not only speaking about the Ukrainian land, of course, it's only weapons, but... As I have been saying this for many times to many media, no matter who you are, which position you are, even like having still a Ukrainian flag on your avatar in Facebook or going out, you know, to the concerts, to, I don't know, some protests, whatever, this still helps because, of course, the media attention is going down. Of course, people start thinking more about the problems you have in your countries. But for us, the war is here every day. We have not had rest for six months already. We do not have vacations. We work every day. We bury our friends and heroes and relatives every day. And of course, without your support, strong support, everyday support, we cannot win this alone. So how do you see this war panning out over the next few months? 
I'm not the war analyst, so it's not me to give you any analysis what will happen in the battlefield, because you do understand that war, it's like in one day, Russian tanks can stand in one position and in one day we can beat them from the whole country. This can happen. I do know that in the coming months, of course, it will be harder and harder because the social economical situation in Ukraine is not pretty good because war costs a lot of money. We lack $5 billion every month in our budget. Of course, we are speaking about the very cold winter in our homes because probably we will not have, not even I'm speaking about gas and oil. Russians have destroyed a lot of facilities and there is already evacuation from some regions so that people just don't freeze up to death in the winter. Of course, uh, you know, every day is tough for us because every day we have shellings, every day we know that some heroes of Ukrainian army die. And we do hope, of course, that this war will end as soon as possible. But to be realistic, we do know that this will not happen this year. So what's your message to people around the world, really, as you mark Ukraine's Independence Day? Oh, my message has always been the same. Every day you should wake up and ask yourself, what have I done today to make sure that Russia is stopped? Because it's not only the war between Russia and Ukraine, it's the war between the values which all of us, we love them so much. I'm speaking about freedom, I'm speaking about democracy. And if at somehow Ukraine lose this war and lose its independence, believe me, the world will change so drastically and probably not in the best way. And of course, I do hope and I hope that this invitation will get to as many people as possible that next year we will celebrate the Ukrainian Independence Day in the peaceful streets of Kyiv and you are all invited to come to celebrate with us. There's more on this story in the Evening Standard newspaper and online at standard.co.uk. That's The Leader. Thanks for listening. We're back tomorrow afternoon at four o'clock.